Today we're going to take a look at the MSI GeForce RTX 5080 16G Vanguard SOC Launch Edition video card. Let's go. Hello fellow gamers, Brent Justice here with the FPS Review. As I said, we're going to look at the MSI GeForce RTX 5080 16G Vanguard SOC Launch Edition. It's a mouthful. Uh, before we jump into looking at the video card itself, this is the Vanguard Launch Edition box. Uh, as I open it up, it is quite special inside uh, as the launch edition video card uh, version model. This has the Lucky in it, MSI's Lucky figurine. And there are nine different versions of this. And there is even a hidden secret one that you can get by surprise. But I do not have that one. In fact, I have already opened this up, but you will see that we get the guard. That's what I have. The guard lucky. So that is the figurine in the launch edition version. And uh, you can uh, see from their website and here on the box cover, uh, the different versions that you can get. But you can check that out on their website to see what versions are available. Uh, when you open up the box, the video card would then be underneath. I have already unboxed and we reviewed this video card on our website, so make sure to check that out. I just wanted to show the box and the figurine because that is the special version here with the launch edition. Okay, so straight out of the box, this is the MSI GeForce RTX 5080 16G Vanguard SoC launch edition video card. The MSRP is $1,229 for this video card. Now the Vanguard series is a brand new series from MSI that sits just under its Supreme series. It is akin to the Supreme series, but with, well, a darker aesthetic and more RGB. So right off the bat, you will notice the uh, grayscale color scheme, uh, blacks and grays, a little bit of carbon fiber look as well here. Uh, you've got some very sharp accents all over the front of the heatsink shroud. Uh, in terms of RGB, you'll see this is RGB here. This is RGB stripped there on the top. And then as we flip it around to the end, we have RGB up here as well. And then harder to see is under these crevices here in the heat sink under here and here and here we have RGB that kind of forms a, uh, a line through the heat sink and that light, lights up pretty well. Uh, we do have pictures of this in our review of this video card on our website at thefpsreview.com. The uh, link to the full review is in the description. That review has pictures, benchmarks, overclocking. You don't want to miss it. Uh, we got some really good results with overclocking. So all of our gaming benchmarks are in that review. Go check it out. Link in the description. Uh, continuing on the theme of the card, we have a full backplate as well. And it is, again, that grayscale. You have the MSI Dragon. Uh, we have some scale looking accents here. Uh, complete pass-through, air pass-through on the rear of the card. Uh, but you can see the overall darker theme to the Vanguard series and how that looks. And again, this is very akin to the Supreme. It is just darker and more RGB. But MSI does have a non-launch edition version of this card. So as I mentioned, the launch edition that we have has the limited edition Lucky figurine. And there's nine different versions of that Lucky figurine and a secret hidden one you can get by chance. However, you can get the non-launch edition version of this card as well. However, do keep in mind all of the Vanguard models are factory overclocked. They are either OC or SOC models. And the one that we have today is the SOC model. So it has the highest factory overclock out of the Vanguard series for the GeForce RTX 5080. Uh, under, under the Vanguard series, you will also find other uh, all of the other GeForce RTX 50 series GPUs represented as well. So uh, MSI has the Vanguard series in all of the GeForce RTX 50 series lineup. Uh, let's quickly go over some of the specs about this, uh, some of the raw specs before we jump into looking at the card a little bit closer. Uh, this is the SOC model and it has a boost clock of 2730. 
2730 megahertz, so 2730 megahertz out of the box. There is also an extreme performance option setting in MSI Center that will set it to 2745. Now how this compares to a reference GeForce RTX 5080 is that a reference GeForce RTX 5080 is 2617 on GPU boost. So 2617 is the reference and this is 2730 out of the box. Uh, the OC model, the non-SOC, has a factory overclock of 2700. So this has a 30 megahertz increase over the OC model, this being the SOC model. But if any of that's confusing, it's very clearly laid out on MSI's website and in our review as well. Just know this is the highest clocked one and it has quite a big GPU boost overclock from the reference clock speed. Um, now, on terms of size, that's where this thing comes in. It is pretty big. Uh, do not underestimate the size on this. Uh, the size of this video card is 357 millimeters long, 151 millimeters wide, 66 deep, or in height. This is a three slot video card. So this being pretty much 14 inches long makes it two inches longer than the Founders Edition RTX 5080. This also weighs 4.2 pounds. So this is not a light video card. It is big, it is not light, um, but it is not the biggest we've ever seen at all. Um, it is a workable size. You can work with this size. Just make sure you do have enough space in your case and cooling as well. Now, as you can see, this is a three fan design. This uses MSI's Hyper Frozer Thermal Technology. That is a vapor chamber cooling. Uh, it also uses clay-based thermal pads and MSI's Stormforce fans. These fans uh, have these ridges in them that you can kind of see in the video uh, on the edge. And what this does, it's also got a ring around the edge of the fans. Uh, and what this does is regulates uh, air pressure, helps with air pressure and air force through the heatsink. And speaking of the heatsink, um, it does have a special uh, fin design on the uh, heatsink itself. I can't really tell from this video, uh, but MSI has a great demonstration on their website and it shows the uh, curved nature of the aluminum fins uh, from the heatsink stack and how it directs the air through them. Uh, and how the air pressure works and is enhanced by their design. Uh, and all of that goes through or is used through a uh, vapor chamber heatsink cooling on this direct contact with the GPU and the memory. And um, as you can see here, the rear or, or half of the card on this end is air pass through. So it will blow the air through this part. Now for these two fans, on the front side, uh, they do not, they don't have a pass through. So the air on these will come out the top and the bottom on that. And there uh, is really nothing to exhaust out the back side of it. It's actually, uh, it's not closed off completely. It is a little bit open on the back side. And so you will get some of the air bleeding out through there, but most of the hot air will probably be coming out the top with these two fans. So just keep that in mind. It'll be coming out, you know, toward the case that way. Uh, toward the uh, however it's situated if it's situated like this in your computer it's going to come out toward toward the uh, side panel of the case right and so keep that in mind but some of that hot air will be coming up through here so if you you know design your airflow in your case very well it should work this is a very very standard and very typical cooling design this is not unusual in any way this is not uh, nothing like the founders edition uh, cards from Nvidia this is designed in a more traditional more traditional sense here on this video card. But you will see here at the top, it does use the 16 pin 12 volt high power connector. So 16 pin. Uh, this does come with an adapter in the box. It is a three pin, eight, three eight pin uh, adapter. So if you do not have 12 volt high power, if you do not have a 16 pin connector, uh, you can use the three eight pin adapter. Uh, you can also plug in just a straight 16 pin cable here, 450 watt cable will work on this, should work just fine. Uh, this is a 360 a TGP video card. So uh, a 450 watt, 12 volt high power cable should work on that 
just fine. There's two different levels of those on power supplies, 450 or 600. But 450 should work on this because it's a 360 TGP video card. Uh, unless you overclock it, which you can do, and they, you can bring that up to 400 watts, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, on the front of the card here, you've got three display port and one HDMI, and they are both 2.1B on that. And we also have, of course, PCI Express 5.0 support. You can see uh, this does support PCI Express 5.0, so that connection can be utilized. Also, this has a unique feature as well. Uh, right on the back side here is a switch, and you have a silent and a gaming mode. So this does have a dual BIOS. That's very advantageous. You could uh, apply different BIOSes on here yourself. Um, but the gaming mode, basically, it's uh, about different fan profiles. Gaming has uh, a more aggressive fan profile, silent a less aggressive. Honestly, you can keep it on either one and it should work fine because this does a really good job at cooling, uh, but gaming is not that loud anyway. Uh, we ran it on the gaming profile during all of our testing and it we didn't notice anything too loud here. This was, this was definitely a very quiet video card on the gaming profile and it stayed very cool as well, so that won't be a problem. In fact, we didn't even need to raise the fan speeds when we did overclocking and we'll talk about that. So that is a uh, good overview, I guess, of how the card looks. It does use MSI's Mystic Light RGB. You can control that in MSI Center. And this does, of course, support MSI Afterburner, so you can do overclocking. So let's talk about overclocking because we actually found that very exciting on this video card. Um, with MSI Afterburner, we could set the power limit on this video card up by 11%. That is higher than the Founders Edition. So we did get a higher power limit on this video card, and that can bring the TDP on this up to 400 watts. And what that allows you to do is, well, get a more stable, consistent, higher overclock. We achieved plus 380 to the GPU core and plus 750 to the memory. Now you can check out the review to see what that looks like on a graph, but I can tell you right now that is about a 3.2 gigahertz, 3.2 gigahertz GPU frequency sustained, consistent, and solid while gaming. Very impressive. That brings it way up. And with a memory at plus 750, that is a 31.5 gigabit per second on memory. So that also brought the memory bandwidth up. I would say the GPU was definitely more overclockable than the memory. It seems the memory is maybe tapping out around 31, maybe 32 gigabits per second uh, for the memory that's on here. But remember on the GeForce RTX 5080, the memory already runs at a very fast 30 gigabits per second, um, which is faster than a 5090. So that's already running pretty high. So being able to push it up to 31 or 31.5, you're gonna get a little bit more bandwidth, but not a lot. Most of your overclocking advantage is gonna come from the GPU overclock. And on this video card, that was very high. We could also increase the GPU voltage on here by plus 100. And again, that just got us to 3.2 consistent across gaming. And what that gave us was about a seven to 10% performance improvement in games uh, for everything. So that was really good. This overclocked well. The default temperatures on this were about 63C uh, without touching anything and then overclocked. It only rose to about 65C, and that was with the fans on auto speed. We did not have to change the fan speed for overclocking, so it remained very cool and very quiet on overclocking. We could see potential here for undervolting as well. There would be some fun for enthusiasts to be had with this video card on undervolting, uh, but we think this is a very tweakable and fun enthusiast kind of video card for people to play with with the GeForce RTX 5080. And in fact, the GeForce RTX 5080 is proving to be a very good GPU for overclocking. Seems to have a lot of headroom on that particular GPU. So this is the MSI GeForce RTX 5080 16G Vanguard SoC Launch Edition. Uh, again, an MSRP of 1229. Um, I would say that it is definitely faster than a 4080 Super, so it is an improvement from that perspective. And it is under the GeForce RTX 4090 on performance. Uh, you are welcome to go to our website, check out all the benchmarks. We have all this in the graphs. I, I would say overclocking makes the value of this look a little bit better. 
uh, definitely improves that performance and narrows the performance between it and the 4090 quite a bit. So you do want to go check out that review and see how, how that performance is narrowed when it's overclocked really high. And that's something that this card can deliver very well and very easily in our testing. Uh, but there you go. This is the uh, Vanguard SOC Launch Edition. And I think that... I like this design from MSI, the Vanguard series. I think it is, uh, you know, I, I li have always liked the Supreme design. And this is kind of like a just darker theme version of that Supreme design. But you're still getting that very high-end SOC factory overclock. You're getting a whole lot of potential there. Uh, for enthusiast tweaking and uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, this is our first look at the Vanguard series from MSI and I intend to uh, look at other models they have in the stack and see how it, they compare and how it looks compared to those because I would like to know myself. Uh, but anyway, that's it. It's a very solid video card. Check out our review on the website for our conclusion, our analysis, what we think about the value and the pricing and uh, all of the benchmarks on their link in the description. But thank you all so much for spending your time with me. And I hope you all have a very, very blessed day. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next one.